2024 was a great year for Power Apps, introducing new features, redesigning the user interface, improving performance with the new analysis engine, and last but not least, many updates were made to the new modern controls. In this video, I want to take a look at some of the modern controls that have great functionality, but may have some barriers to use as we enter 2025. We'll look at some workarounds to fix these issues as well. This isn't an exhaustive list by any means, and this isn't meant as a negative video towards modern controls. This is more to share some of the current issues that I've encountered so that you can avoid and work around them in your development. So let's get started. The button saw some great updates in 2024, adding more control over the look and feel of the text inside of the button. We also saw the addition of Fluent 2 icons inside of the button. Now, two key points to note with the button control is that the button doesn't have the full list of Fluent 2 icons yet, which can kind of limit your design options if you're looking to use those specific icons. So you may be reaching for custom SVG icons rather than using icons inside of the button control. Another limitation is the absence of a tooltip feature, like the one found in the toolbar control. Now, tooltips can be incredibly helpful for providing additional context or instructions to the user, so we're hopeful that this will be added in 2025 to enhance the user's experience. Next, we'll look at the checkbox and the toggle controls. These two controls actually exited preview in 2024 and are now marked as generally available, but there's some odd behavior that happens when these two controls are used inside of a flexible height gallery. On the screen, we're looking at a gallery of forum posts with a select button over on the right hand side. You'll notice that if I try to click this select button, which I've just done, there's no selection that occurs. Instead, I need to click again in order to select the checkbox. If I add the toggle control now, you can see that if I select once, which I've just done, no selection is made. But if I click again, now you can see that the toggle flips. This isn't the biggest issue in the world, especially since it's limited to flexible height galleries, but it is something that can be frustrating to users, especially if you're using these flexible height galleries throughout your app. Next, we'll look at the modern combo box control. This control is often used as a search and select mechanism for large data sets, which is where you can run into issues with its functionality. Searching a data source in a combo box is currently limited to the first 800 records. This can be quite restrictive if you're dealing with large data sets. To illustrate this, I have a SharePoint list with 1000 items. And if I search for item 800, you can see that's found in the list. But if I search for 801, you can see there's no results. To work around this, you can add a filter function to the data source to filter by records starting with self.searchText. This allows you to see search results beyond the 800 record limit. However, even after selecting a record, the search text remains until you click away from the combo box. In this example, if I search for a name in the combo box, it actually finds the record even though it's later than 800 records in the data source. As you can see when I select this record, the drop down part of the combo box disappears, and you can see my search text is still listed in the text of the combo box. However, when I click away, you can see that the text is updated to my selection. Additionally, removing the search text and moving the focus outside of the combo box does not reselect the original record, which can be inconvenient to the user. This is, however, the only way to clear a selection inside of a combo box without an outside control or button to reset the combo box. These issues aren't application breaking by any means, but they are confusing to users and might be a barrier to using the modern combo box in production applications. 
Very similar to the modern combo box, the modern dropdown has a notable limitation where there's no built-in way to clear a selection. This is more of an issue with the dropdown control since there's no way to select the text inside of the dropdown control and hit backspace on your keyboard. To address this, you can add a button next to the dropdown with a reset function in the onSelect property of the button, allowing users to clear their selection manually. The table control has seen some exciting new features in 2024, including a multi-select option allowing users to select multiple rows, built-in sorting capabilities, the ability to add custom headers, and support for non-dataverse connectors. While this control did receive these updates throughout the year, there are still some issues that need to be ironed out. Firstly, the onSelect property cannot be cleared from the table. When you have an action in your onSelect property, such as navigating to a different screen, the onSelect property of the table then gets triggered again when you return to the screen with the table, as you can see here. To fix this, we can add a context variable to our onSelect property called CTX table fix. When the onSelect property is triggered, we want to update this context variable to true and then immediately update it to false. Now in our tables items property, we'll add a filter function where either our context variable equals true equals false or is blank. Keep in mind, you'll need some other filter functions for this to work. And in this case, I have another filter that filters the last name column of my data source based on a text input. What this is doing is updating the items of the table when our context variable gets changed to true and then back to false upon a row selection. When the items of the table change, the selected record gets unselected. We also need to account for when the variable is blank, which is why we have the isBlank function. Now you can see when I play my app, if I select a row, it takes me to the other screen. And if I click on the cancel button, it returns to the screen with the table and the row is now deselected. So in a sense, we're tricking the table into deselecting the row. Another issue with the table control is that the height of the table and the visible number of rows can affect whether the table refreshes data properly. On screen, we have a number input set to 725, and the table's height property is referencing the value of this number input. If I try to search for a name, you can see the number of rows in the bottom left corner of the table shows that there is one row, but the results displayed still shows all records. If we update this number to 717, we can see that the table refreshes properly after searching. My best guess as to why this is happening is when the height of the table exceeds 15 rows displayed without scrolling, the refresh issue starts to occur. Depending on your screen size and resolution, the magic height number to fix this issue might be 717 or it might be a little bit less. In this case, you can see that 717 accommodates 15 rows perfectly without the need for scrolling. But as soon as I go above that number, as we saw with 725, now we can see a little bit of that 16th row is shown. Rather than hard coding the height of the table at 717, or whatever it happens to be on your computer, you can instead use this if function to check if the parent container's height is greater than 717, then force the height of the table to 717. And if not, if it is less than that, then have the table expand to the parent's height. One more thing with the table control to mention is that non-dataverse data sources can't display currency values properly. So they're shown as plain numbers instead, as you can see with this salary column. Next, we'll talk about the text control. One thing to watch out for is that the auto height property only updates when the screen changes. So as you can see on screen, if I switch to a mobile view, the text on screen does not auto adjust in height. 
If I click on a button to go to a different screen and then return back, we can see that the text height updates properly. Although this wasn't strictly a bug, there's an important update regarding the text input control. This year, a new field was added for trigger output, and initially the default was to update the text output when the user focuses out of the text input. In other words, the value of the text input control wouldn't change until the user clicks somewhere else on screen. This caused an issue where if the user went from typing text to clicking a button, the text output was not updated before the button was pressed. Users would need to click outside the text input and then click on the button. If you're experiencing any odd behavior with your text inputs, this might be the cause and you might be able to fix it by either changing the trigger output to delayed or key press. The delayed option has a half second delay, whereas the key press option will update the output of the control immediately. Lastly, we'll talk about the toolbar and the tab list controls. So currently these two controls lack the ability to vertically align their contents over the height of the control. This can make it difficult to polish your application uh, if you're kind of fighting with the formatting of these. So as you can see on screen, both of the uh, button portions of these controls are aligned to the top of the control. The sweet spot for the toolbar control seems to be to have the padding at medium and to set the height to 44. And with that, you can see that the toolbar buttons are in the middle of the height of the control. Now with our tab list, the sweet spot for this also seems to be 44 at the medium size, where you can see the selected bar is aligned with the bottom of the control, or you can have the size at large with the height to 55, and that also achieves a similar look. This makes it easier to align these two controls inside of a container, knowing that the buttons are in the middle of the height of the control. And there you have it. Some things to look out for using the modern controls in 2025. I'm excited about the future of these controls and I'm definitely looking forward to their future updates. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for future videos on modern controls. Let me know in the comments what issues you've encountered with modern controls that I didn't list here. Thanks for watching and have a great 2025.